Hello and welcome to another episode of Virtual Legality. I'm your host, Richard Hogue, managing member of the Hogue Law Business Law Firm of Northville, Michigan. And if you haven't been following me here in Virtual Legality for a while now, because I haven't had good reason to talk about it, you should know that I am a huge college football fan, the actual sport. I'm a big Michigan Wolverine fan. I love my alma mater. I went to Michigan Law School and I've followed them forever. And no, this video isn't just an excuse to put Denard Robinson, one of my favorite quarterbacks at the University of Michigan, at the start of this video. It's not just an excuse for that. Maybe it's a little bit of an excuse for that. But no, we've actually got a topic for virtual legality here, something that touches on something that I love, college football, video games, and law. And what is that? Well, EA Sports announced not more than an hour ago that for those who never stopped believing, college football is coming back with a logo or some kind of typeface here, EA Sports College Football. Now, I think a lot of people jumped on that and said, oh my God, my favorite video game's coming back, NCAA College Football. We're going to talk about that in a second. But for the lawyers in the audience, when I looked at this, one thing jumped out immediately, and that was the name of the title. If we look at the Wikipedia entry for NCAA Football, that was the name of the game series that was so popular for so long. It says the series began in 1993 with the release of Bill Walsh College Football, which matches the naming convention that we just saw, but EA eventually acquired the licensing rights to the NCAA name and officially rechristened the series with the release of NCAA Football 98, which would go through 2014, on which cover we would see Denard Robinson. I'll just click on that periodically throughout the video. But that was the name under which this game series became popular. In July of 2013, the NCAA announced that it would not renew its licensing contract with Electronic Arts because of an ongoing legal dispute regarding the use of player likenesses in the games. Now, there's way too much to unpack here for a short video like this on YouTube. But suffice it to say, Electronic Arts in their NCAA products allowed you to modify characters, allowed you to do things to change the name that they appeared on your roster with, and people would go and they would make things look like they were the players on the actual teams in college football, as one would expect. Furthermore, Electronic Arts would also help out the process on occasion by using the same numbers as the players that you might otherwise like on your home team, potentially making certain physical characteristics match. Electronic Arts would go back and forth between doing this for certain players on their teams and not. The legal issues are very, very murky, even now here in 2021. But suffice it to say, Electronic Arts got into a lot of trouble. Uh, The NCAA got into a lot of trouble. A lot of people got into a lot of trouble. And ultimately, folks decided that it didn't make sense, even though this video game was so lucrative, to sell it any longer. However, when they lost that licensing contract, as Wikipedia points out, and this matches up with my recollection of what happened back then, the contract only covered the use of the NCAA name and related logos. The blue circle, the NCAA as a body, not those of individual schools and conferences which are negotiated individually or through the collegiate licensing company. The CLC concurrently announced that it would extend its existing licensing deal with EA through 2017, ensuring that EA Sports could continue the series without the NCAA branding, and EA made plans to continue the series under what name? The old college football name. However, The series was placed on hiatus in September 2013, following three major conferences, the Big Ten, the Pac-12, and the SEC, pulling their trademark licenses from EA and uncertainties surrounding the results of lawsuits involving the use of player likenesses in-game. So, what can we tell just from this announcement? I'm excited as anybody about having a college football video game back in my life. One of the things is that At some point in the discussions, the NCAA appears to not be involved. Now, you'll get some answers that we're going to look at from Electronic Arts spokespeople that suggest that they just wanted to change the name to make it go in a different direction and to harken back to the history of the franchise. I don't want to tell anybody what to believe about statements made in terms of corporate messaging from representatives like those from Electronic Arts, but to me, it doesn't pass the smell test. The NCAA name is enormously lucrative and enormously useful to EA Sports in selling this forward. College football suggests something else, which means to me, looking at it as a corporate lawyer who regularly looks at intellectual property licenses, that somebody involved at the NCAA isn't yet prepared or doesn't want to have their name on a product 
like this. Now, continuing on with this story, I was looking at what is happening here. And so ESPN was always the likely place to go to find out about Madden football or NCAA football because they cover these things fairly regularly. And they have an article up that pointed out what I would have expected, which is to make the game happen. EA Sports partnered with collegiate licensing company CLC, which is a name we just saw here in the Wikipedia discussion. But what is interesting about that is a name that suggested that they were willing to make this game from day one with EA Sports, right? It says CLC concurrently announced that it would extend its existing license, even though EA didn't have the NCAA license. Now, what is collegiate licensing company? It's effectively these schools that operate under the NCAA as an overall governing body, but are just members in that institution negotiating licenses for themselves. This is a separate intellectual property, trademark licensing, and marketing company. And so if you're one of these schools, if you're Michigan or if you're Alabama or if you're some other school that is a participant in, sure, the Big Ten or the SEC or the Pac-12 and in the NCAA, you still have intellectual property rights in your own intellectual property. So you can license it out to this separate company. And in fact, the NCAA works hand in hand with CLC very often. You see described here, they help license 200 colleges and universities, athletic conferences, bowl games, the Heisman Trophy, and the NCAA. So what license we were talking about back in 2013 and 2014 was the NCAA's own trademarks, but not really the trademarks that people cared about the most. That's your Michigan Wolverines. That's your Alabama Crimson Tide. I shouldn't even put them in the same sentence based on our football performances over the last 20 years or so. But that's what people cared about the most. And so one of the interesting questions that's going to pop out here is, why now? Why February 2nd, 2021, are you making this announcement? Is the game imminent? And we'll find that it is not. Why would you otherwise say this? And we'll also find that Electronic Arts pretty much avoids the question. Now, as another part of this Wikipedia entry, you see the same kind of summary description of what happened back in 2013. Due to recent legal disputes between the association, Electronic Arts, college athletes, and others regarding the usage of college athletes' likenesses in video games, which is currently barred by the NCAA because of the concept of sport amateurism, they would not renew their licensing deal with EA. So the NCAA is this amateur sports body. They prohibit players in America that play college football from taking money for their performance. And the NCAA didn't want to license this video game anymore because it was getting legal heat from players that said, hey, that's not fair. You're clearly benefiting from our likenesses. Look at this video game. I can point out who I am in it. And the NCAA said, hey, you you might be right. We have to settle these lawsuits. And so we have to get out of the licensing game to Electronic Arts. The collegiate licensing company wasn't as concerned at the time. However, the expiration of the license only affects the use of the NCAA's trademarks and games. Teams and other events are licensed from schools individually or through organizations such as the collegiate licensing company, who announced, as we just discussed, on that same day, they would extend their license. As such, EA ensured that with these existing deals in place, it would still be able to produce future versions of the franchise without the NCAA license, as it did prior to 1997 in that Bill Walsh college football era. EA Sports Executive Vice President at the time, Andrew Wilson, announced that the next edition of the franchise was already in development and would still feature the college teams, leagues, and all the innovation fans expect from EA Sports, which is a bit of a side comment, right? I don't really expect a lot of innovation from EA Sports, but that's neither here nor there. But then something happened. The SEC, Big Ten, and Pac-12, as we talked about, announced they would not license their trademarks to EA. Why? Because the same reason the NCAA was skittish about this. These lawsuits were a potential problem. Not only were they a potential problem for legal exposure, they tended to look bad. The actual public opinion of the concept of amateurism and these college sports athletes not being allowed to benefit from the use of their own name and likeness and the services that they were providing to their schools was starting to really not gel with public opinion on the question at hand. So the SEC, Big Ten, and Pac-12 said, no, 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 we're also pulling our license, which tells us a couple things. One, there was a general skittishness in 2013, 2014, but also that the collegiate licensing company that otherwise has the rights to license the SEC, Big Ten, and Pac-12, and the NCAA, at least as they describe it themselves, doesn't have final authority. And we wouldn't expect them to. When you are a school like the University of Michigan, you license out your trademark rights, your logo, the way your stadium looks, whatever else you have to actually license out, jumping under the banner to start the football game. When you license that out to CLC, you almost certainly get a right to veto 
things that you don't want to have your logo or name associated with. So the SEC, Big Ten, and Pac-12 decided to do that. The NCAA had already decided to do that. Once you start pulling those things from the game, it starts to look less and less like actual college football and a little bit more like something like Blades of Steel back in the NES era where it's just a city name and maybe some colors, but probably not the same colors of the city name because the NHL might sue them if they did that. So it starts to get more far afield from what you want to deliver if you're electronic art sports, which is something resembling the experience you get from watching uh, or participating in the crowd at a college football game. So that's the future of the series as it stood back then. What happened now? Well, if we go, we see another ESPN article, everything you need to know about the return of EA Sports College football video game. Maybe. It's not everything you need to know. It's everything that's available to know right now, but it's still an interesting article. And one of the things that they ask first, and rightly so, is why is EA Sports bringing the video game back now? What has happened? The rules haven't changed. Legislation hasn't passed writ large. There's some legislation in California and Florida that we'll talk about in the next section of this video, but nothing has changed functionally. And what does Electronic Arts effectively say? Well, the question may not be so much why now versus why not now. I love messaging. I, I, I really do. Th this gentleman, Mr. Holt here, does a very good job of avoiding the questions he doesn't want to answer throughout these kinds of articles. And I couldn't find a better answer that he gave or that anybody at Electronic Arts gave than this. So that's what we know right now is why now? Why not now? I would argue that in general, we'll talk about the legal landscape. There's a general notion amidst the schools and the conferences and the NCAA that likeness rights for the players are definitely going to be granted either by Congress or the NCAA or something in between at the various state levels. And so this isn't a fight worth having. We might as well make some money from the video game. So it wouldn't surprise me if the conferences got less skittish earlier than the NCAA. The NCAA is still holding out a little bit. And so once those conferences come back into the fold, Electronic Arts can enact this plan that we saw referenced in the Wikipedia article talking about the fact that the CLC was all on board with making a non-NCAA named game as early as 2014. It's just that legal exposure can make everybody skittish. When can we play the game? To be determined. Now, that's not actually the most information that's online about this right now. CLC and Electronic Arts actually put out a press release that I didn't see referenced anywhere, including in this ESPN stuff. CLC is not really known for their press releases, so maybe it's slipped through the cracks a little bit. But they put out a press release today that said, Electronic Arts Inc., a worldwide leader in interactive entertainment and sports gaming, and CLC, the nation's leading collegiate trademark licensing company, announced the expected return of college football to EA Sports. Now that's just great language, right? You've got a press release, you got the trumpets, you got all the streamers flying, everything else. You don't actually say the return of college football, which you could probably say. It's, you could get away with saying the return. You say the expected return. These are lawyers and PR people actually massaging this to within an inch of its life. We, we think this thing is coming back. What happened then most recently is that the CLC and Electronic Arts entered into an agreement or extended an agreement or did something else that facilitates the return. We think it'll come back. We're not making any promises in this press release. Hilarious. The partnership allows for EA Sports to be the exclusive developer of simulation college football video game experiences. What does that remind you of? Well, in all likelihood, it reminds you of the NFL contract that Electronic Arts entered into that also gave them the exclusive rights to simulation professional football experiences, allowing for things like mobile games and what we have seen announced from 2K Sports and doing something arcadey that we don't know what shape it will take because we don't have any more contours around it. Electronic Arts has once again gone out and said, we want that exclusive. We want to lock up the simulation space for this football game. And that's the top line item. They announced it as the return of college football, as we're going to see in this press release itself. It's nowhere near return. It's not imminent. It might not even be started outside of pre-production. What they wanted to tell everybody is we got the exclusive again for all of these college football teams, and you're not going to get them from anywhere else. Development of EA Sports College Football is just underway, with launch timing still to come as the project progresses in the years, with an S, ahead. Now that's signaling as far far as they can that this thing is just started, that you're not going to see this thing anytime soon. If this were a Bioware game and it had an announcement like this, you wouldn't see it till 2027. But this is a sports game. It's probably going to build off the infrastructure of their Madden series, which you might or might not like, depending on how much you like Madden. But it's probably not going to take eons to create. And yet 
They still say project progress in the years ahead. This is not coming anytime soon, college football sports fans. The EA Sports College Football franchise was a consistent top five sports title in North America during its previous run. It was hugely popular. If you walked around any college dorm while I was in college, while my brother was in college, really during any time in the early 2000s, it was on virtually every lobby television, people playing NCAA football, people hanging out and watching NCAA football. It was very, very popular uh, around the country. And it just went away. And it's kind of unheard of to have a product like that go away. But when you have legal exposure, things like that can happen. We have a lot of really exciting work ahead of us and a great team that is eager to bring a new game to players in the next couple of years. The new franchise will deliver authentic college football experiences and the high quality gameplay that fans have long loved in college football games from EA Sports. Through the CLC partnership, the franchise will include... The rights to more than 100 institutions, which is amusing because the CLC wiki page and their About Us page, which I didn't bring up, actually mentions that they represent 200 schools, but mostly not Division I, I would assume. Featuring the logos, stadiums, uniforms, game day traditions, and more that fans have come to know and love. All right, that's a good list of things. The logos, the stadiums, the uniforms, everything you love about your team and watching your team, watching the laundry on the field that bears your colors and your logo and the winged helmets in Michigan, that's going to get you most of the way there for a college football title. But will it get you all the way there? We'll talk about that as well. While this college game will not include student athlete names, images, and likenesses, EA Sports is continuing to watch those developments closely. Now, that's another area where I think the answer to why now, why not now is a little bit disingenuous. One of the things that I would bet happened here is that EA Sports, the CLC, everybody involved with these kinds of discussions, negotiations, and projects was looking at, would the NCAA solve this likeness problem? Would they give likeness rights? Would Congress force them to? Would the states? We're going to take a look at that in just a second. But suffice it to say, it has not gotten sorted out on the time frame that was expected. And so this announcement in early February 2021 actually makes a ton of sense when juxtaposed with the prior announcement that the NCAA made all the way back in 2019. So we'll take a look at that. EA Sports will reveal more about the new college football franchise and related product launch timings in the future. And that's all you get right now. But expected return just underway, project progress in the years ahead. This thing is not imminent at all. To be determined, probably isn't giving you all the information that you need. What will be in the game? Still unclear. It's very early in the process. Whether that's a reimagining or an evolution of things that were in the game before, or new things and new ways to play, I don't want to get into the details of what we're already planning, and we'll just put it at that. But it will be something that our core fans, if they appreciated and loved NCAA 14 for something more than Denard Robinson, they will love this game because that's just the starting point. And maybe it will be. Certainly this gentleman, again, the representative of Electronic Arts, is doing well with commenting on these things, doesn't want to commit to things. You don't want to get out into the Peter Molyneux zone where you promise all these grand things about your game and then if it doesn't come out for four years and some of those things had to hit the cutting room floor, you wind up looking bad. This person, as much as I make fun of some of the responses that he gives, is doing his job and he's doing it well. Does the NCAA need to change its rules before the game can return? No. Current NCAA rules prohibit EA Sports from paying players to use their names, images, and likenesses in the game. If those rules are still in effect when the game is released, EA Sports plans to include real details such as team names, mascots, and uniforms, what we talked about, what they can actually license, what they have the rights to, but not anything that would resemble the real players on those rosters. That's going to be a trick. Because one of the things they got in trouble for was effectively the ability of people to make the teams look like they had the likenesses and potentially walking over the line a little bit to make some of the players on these teams look like their real-life counterparts at the EA level. EA Sports announced it would stop making its college football game in 2013, shortly before the company agreed to pay part of a reported $40 million to former college players to settle a lawsuit filed by former UCLA basketball player Ed O'Bannon, obviously not a part of the NCAA football franchise, but was cracking open this whole likeness concept across a whole spectrum of ideas. The lawsuit argued that it was illegal for EA Sports to sell a game with characters that looked strikingly similar to real athletes without paying those athletes. And it got settled. So you didn't really get a fulsome determination of whether somebody was in the right or wrong, but legal skittishness 
is legal skittishness. How will the current debate around name, image, and likeness rules impact the game? While real players don't have to be included in the new version of the game, they could be included if future legislation makes it possible for college athletes to negotiate as a group. The NCAA, prompted by pressure from state and federal lawmakers, is in the process of changing its rules to provide athletes some opportunities to profit from endorsements in the future. Now, that's giving the NCAA a lot of credit. In the process, maybe. In the process, maybe not. If we go back to 2019, you will see, and I can link a description of this and a link to this video in the description to this video. I did a talk with MGO Blog, which Hogloss sponsors, full disclosure, uh, that is a blog about the University of Michigan athletics department, their football teams, their basketball teams, and their hockey teams most prominently, but Michigan athletics in general. And I did a section on their podcast for 42 minutes because I'm a talker that was called Name and Image Rights with special guest Richard Hogue of Hogue Law. Richard Hogue joins the podcast to the NCAA's astoundingly retrograde response to the California bill. The state of California had just proposed or passed at the time a bill that was giving their athletes uh, name and likeness rights, which doesn't say what your mainstream articles blindly republished that it said. Read it for yourself. And yeah, I have a bit of a niche is commenting on other reporting and saying, hey, you're not getting the full nuance. But if we go and we look at what the NCAA proposed in October of 2019, their board of governors starts process to enhance name, image, and likeness opportunities. They voted unanimously to permit students participating in athletics the opportunity to benefit from the use of their name. They voted unanimously that this was an issue of justice and fairness in October of 2019. Then they had a bunch of mealy mouth rules, which you can read for yourself or you can listen to my talk on MGO blog. And what was these notion of fairness? What was the timeline for establishing when these players would get it? Well, the working group will continue to gather feedback through April of 2020, which obviously was a year, on how best to respond to the state and federal legislative environment and to refine its recommendations on the principles and regulatory framework. The board asked each division to create any new rules beginning immediately, which as far as I know didn't really happen, but no later than January 2021. Ah, there's the rub. January 2021, why that was just last month. That's only a couple of days ago, Rick. And I think if you look at the timing here, you look at EA Sports, you look at CLC, you look at what they thought would happen, is that they thought there was a chance they would be able to announce that college players would be in the new college football game, which at that point, once that's all passed, might well be called NCAA football again, because the NCAA doesn't have any legal concerns once everything is finally settled. But that didn't happen. In fact, in the middle of January, you get articles like this one. The NCAA Council tables long-awaited legislation on name, image, likeness, and transfer exemptions. Like many bureaucratic institutions, the NCAA works very slowly and then not at all. And then very slowly some more, pushed in this case really by the existence of state and Congress likeness bills. The NCAA has now appeared before Congress. They've tried to answer questions. They're having a lot of difficulty setting these rules because they're concerned that it will obliterate the very existence of the NCAA and amateurism in sport. And I can't say that it won't. It might. It's certainly a different model than they've operated under throughout their history. But this will happen. This is happening at many state levels individually. The National Congress is looking at it. And so the NCAA is taking its ball and gone home a little bit. And because they did that, I think you can take that particular data point and take a direct line from that into EA Sports with CLC announcing this today, not as NCAA football, but as something called EA Sports College Football with a potential name change if the NCAA ever gets its ducks in a row, but based on the fact that they were supposed to know the answer to this question by January of 2021. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is what is in this thing, right? What will the game be called is the last question ESPN says. It all starts really with where we see college football is going. Really, does it, Mr. Holt? You think college football is going to college football? It's a heck of a name. There's a lot of things happening and there's a lot of things happening in sports. EA Sports College Football gives us a name and brand to kind of work around for some things that might evolve as well as what we're focusing on really out of the gate, which is... Really, the FBS Division I school, that's your majors, that's your big schools, your Michigans and your Alabamas, and the road to the college football playoff and college football championship. Now, those two references also caught my interest because the college football championship is a separate entity. 
It's owned and run in part by the various conferences. We've got here the College Football Playoff Frequently Asked Questions page. It is run by the FBS conferences. All 10 conferences, as well as the FBS independents, are members of an entity, CFP Administration, LLC. And outside of this one answer to ESPN, we don't see reference to the College Football Playoff and College Football Championship anywhere else. So this is an open question for me, at least. Do they have the license rights right now to these various things? Did they come through CLC? It doesn't appear that CLC has the licensing rights to the college football playoff and college football championship, but I I could easily be wrong on that. And if you have different information, please leave it in a comment to this video. But these are the important things, the playoff, the championship, other schools that don't have licenses with CLC. Are they going to be included? Are there schools within certain conferences that aren't a part of the CLC license? There's a lot to unpack here, and there's a lot of things to work through if you are EA Sports. But we don't know what we don't know. And right now, we don't know what the game looks like. We don't know when it will be released. We don't know precisely why they changed the name of the game, except that the NCAA doesn't appear to want to be involved with its marketing, at least at this point in time. And yet, I'm still sitting here very happy to not be reviewing a lawsuit or other major controversy in the world of video games and pretty happy to say that college football will be on the horizon at some point in the future. I hope it's done right. I don't know about Electronic Arts. I haven't bought a copy of Madden in a long time, Uh, but certainly my memories of playing NCAA football and enjoying that with my family and my friends are are something that they're going to bank on for probably at least one solid sale at the start of whenever this project actually realizes commercialization. And I hope very much It is everything that everybody wants it to be. We will see. But certainly, like most stories in virtual legality, it isn't exactly what it appears with just a single tweet from EA saying, hey, it's coming back. And then one last photo of Denard Robinson for y'all. This has been Virtual Legality for today. If you enjoyed this content, we're talking about business and law of video games, pop culture, movies, movies, television, all the time. Please consider supporting the channel. As it turns out, doing all of this so often has taken up more of my time at the law firm than I would have expected. So please check out our Patreon, Streamlabs, buy something from the store. We've also got a a button for membership coming to the YouTube channel uh, relatively soon, and and we're going to be looking at other alternatives as well. If you don't want to do that, but you still love the content, Please just subscribe, tell your friends, help us grow. We're loving having conversations with new people here in virtual legality all the time. And that is more than enough. Every single little bit counts and we appreciate it so very, very much. If you caught this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. And if you listen to it as a podcast, thank you so much for listening. And I will catch you on the very next episode of Virtual Legality. Virtual Legality is a YouTube video series with audio podcast versions presented as commentary and for education and entertainment purposes only. It does not constitute legal advice and does not create an attorney-client relationship. If you have legal questions about the topics discussed, please consult your own legal counsel.